Why is the light source ASML's Achilles heel? Why is 2% more deadly than 3 nanometers? Has ASML gone mad? The Dutch giant, which monopolizes 95% of the global EUV lithography machine market, suddenly moved up its new factory launch by two years, pouring tens of billions of euros into a super campus the size of 50 football fields. It's well known that for the past decade, despite a 24-month lead time for its EUV equipment, global wafer fabs have been queuing up. TSMC even locked in orders three years in advance to secure capacity, and Samsung and Intel have had to scramble for existing stock at high prices. The truth behind this sudden frenzy defies all expectations. It's not that TSMC's 3 nanometers process has been leapfrogged, nor is it a breakthrough in Japanese exposure technology. Instead, China has torn open the 30-year semiconductor technology iron curtain maintained by the West, all thanks to a seemingly negligible small figure, 3.42%. When this number was announced at a global semiconductor industry conference, Wall Street analysts collectively fell silent, and ASML's stock price instantly plummeted by 8%. A century-long contest for dominance in chip manufacturing is quietly being rewritten in a way no one could have predicted. The light bulb of the chip factory. Think of the EUV light source as the light bulb for the chip factory and conversion efficiency as its luminous efficiency. To manufacture chips below the 7 nanometers node, this light bulb needs a stable output of 250W of power. Previously, the best Western technology could only produce 1 watt of useful light from 100 watts of electricity, 1% conversion efficiency. China, however, has directly achieved 3.42%, the equivalent of getting three times the light for the same electricity cost. The shockwave from this technological revolution is far beyond external imagination. In the realm of extreme ultraviolet light sources, the CO2 lasers used by Western countries are as bulky as household refrigerators, taking up several square meters and requiring dedicated equipment rooms. Chinese research teams, however, carved a new path. They developed a solid-state laser that shrinks the behemoth down to the size of a palm and weighs less than 2 kilograms, achieving a qualitative leap in both portability and stability. Even more exciting is the big energy. Within this, small size, it shattered the 2% energy conversion efficiency bottleneck that the Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands and the Paul Scherer Institute in Switzerland had struggled for five years to cross, raising the core metric to 2.3%. That 0.3% difference is the critical step that rewrites industry rules. The leader of this technological breakthrough is researcher Lin Nan, who previously headed ASML's light source technology R&D team. This technical expert, who had spent a decade deep within the core department of the international lithography giant, resolutely chose to return home. He led a youth commando team with an average age of under 35, completing the research cycle that Western teams estimated would take 10 years in just three. During the strictest period of technological blockade, they conducted 1,782 light path simulations and 467 material ratio experiments ultimately giving the China chip an independently controlled extreme ultraviolet light source. This silent technological battle has completely broken the West's monopoly on high-end lithography technology. Behind this lies the fatal flaw in the Western semiconductor hegemony. Next, we will dissect ASML's panic-driven expansion, the collapse of the U.S. monopoly, and Germany's helplessness to understand why this 3.42% can rewrite the global rulebook. I. The myth of Western monopoly, punctured by 3.42%. The US-based company Symer harbors a secret. The conversion efficiency of the EUV light source it supplies to ASML has not exceeded 1.5% for over a decade. When Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger complained about ASML capacity being the bottleneck, in 2022, he was essentially crying poor. It wasn't that ASML couldn't build the entire machine. It was that Symer's light bulb lacks sufficient power. To manufacture 3 nanometers chips, TSMC needs each EUV machine to process 125 wafers per hour, which requires the light source to stably output 250W. 
Yet, Symer's light source demands a staggering 17,000 watts of electricity to achieve this, the equivalent of running 170 air conditioners simultaneously. More ironically, the European Photonics flagship program, a project costing 2 billion euros, saw the Delft University of Technology team only manage to reach a conversion efficiency of 2.1% by 2024, still unable to solve the problem of tin debris fouling the mirrors. In contrast, China's Shanghai Institute of Optics and Fine Mechanics went straight to 3.42%, using a solid-state laser approach that reduces debris by 90%. Even ASML's former CEO Peter Wenning privately admitted, That's a path we didn't dare to take. This is far more than a simple technical achievement. It's a crushing blow to the technological dominance of the West's semiconductor industry, pouring cold water over its carefully woven emperor's new clothes. For the past two decades, the West has often described extreme ultraviolet EUV lithography as an engineering miracle more difficult than the atomic bomb. While superficially stressing technical complexity, the real aim was to build a protective industrial moat through technological blockades. While the world focused on the massive EUV lithography system, the core technology was hidden in the closely guarded heart, the EUV light source. From the tin droplet laser produced plasma technology, a joint effort by three major US national laboratories, to ASML's absolute secrecy over key parameters, this technological black box was essentially a mechanism to maintain global semiconductor industry leadership through patent barriers and supply chain monopolies. The Chinese research team found a different route, cutting in from high-power laser technology, using original tin target material processing and beam control solutions to achieve a swift leap. This breakthrough not only validated that EUV technology is not an insurmountable chasm but also ripped the veil off Western technological hegemony, the so-called technology gap was merely a manufactured cognitive illusion. Data shows that the key parameters of the domestic EUV light source are already close to international advanced levels, directly challenging ASML's 80% plus monopoly share in the global lithography market. Following the news, ASML's stock price tumbled, prompting the company to accelerate its expansion plans at its Dutch and Korean bases. This technological gain reveals the West's deep-seated anxiety over the loss of its industrial leadership. 2. ASML's Expansion Panic Desperate Self-Rescue Two Years Ahead of Schedule ASML's recent actions look like a frantic scramble. The new campus, originally planned for 2030, was aggressively moved up to 2028. It's pouring 170 million euros into land acquisition and building ISO class 100,000 clean rooms and a dedicated light source laboratory. Why the urgency? Look at this troubling data. In 2023, it only built 60 UV machines, each dependent on Symer for the light source, while a 10 kilowatt solid state laser system is already under testing in China. If the conversion efficiency stabilizes at 4%, the single light source power could surge to 400W, making one machine equivalent to two of ASML's in terms of output. Even more critical is ASML's fatal soft spot. The new campus requires an additional 15% of the Netherlands' total electricity consumption. But the Dutch power grid failed 37 times in 2022, forcing ASML to beg for nuclear power from Belgium. There's also the nitrogen emission problem with stringent EU environmental regulations forcing the company to spend 200 million euros just on exhaust treatment facilities, adding about 3 million euros to the cost of each EUV machine. In contrast, the Chinese solid-state light source is compact and energy-efficient, avoiding these issues entirely. ASML isn't just expanding, it's engaging in a desperate flight from doom. From a business perspective, the core of the Dutch giant's monopoly has never been the lithography machine system itself, but the closed-loop profit chain. Light Source Machine Customer Through its subsidiary Symer, it tightly controls extreme ultraviolet EUV, light source technology, holding over 90% of the global market share. By securing long-term, exclusive supply agreements with chip giants like TSMC and Intel, it built a dual mode of technology and market access. When the Chinese research team successfully developed a 255W high-power EUV light source, 
It was like plunging a dagger into ASML's weak spot. It not only broke the Western technological blockade on a core component, but also directly undermined the foundation of its profit chain. 3. The Failure of U.S. Blockade Symer's Monopoly Countdown The U.S. company Symer can no longer hide its vulnerabilities. Its 30-year monopoly on EUV light sources relies on CO2 laser technology, which is bulky, the size of a shipping container, and stubbornly inefficient. Its latest 2024 light source barely reached 250W of power, with a lifespan of only 8,000 hours. Every time TSMC replaces a light source, it means half a day of downtime, costing millions of dollars. Even more ironic is the 2025 report from the U.S. Semiconductor Industry Association, which states that China's mature chip capacity accounts for 33% of the world's total, relying on DUV lithography machines. The more the U.S. blocks EUV, the more China consolidates its mature capacity base. Germany's Zeiss, ASML's exclusive lens supplier, delivers an even harsher truth, stating that 80% of chips are made with DUV. EUV is niche. The U.S. forced the Netherlands to ban the sale of EUV, yet China has been aggressively stockpiling DUV machines. In 2023, ASML's DUV sales to China accounted for 40% of the global total. Now, the Chinese light source breakthrough is set to transfer the cost advantage of DUV onto EUV, meaning the manufacturing of advanced chips could potentially become cheaper and faster in China than in the West. After reviewing this, you'll understand why a 2% conversion efficiency is not a numbers game. It is the key to breaking the global technological monopoly. The light source breakthrough is not just a simple technical advance. It is the beginning of a supply chain rule change. The era of the West resting on its monopoly is truly coming to an end. China's technological breakthrough is not about creating a new monopoly but about returning the semiconductor industry to its essence. The leader is the one who solves the problem. This is a genuinely positive development for global technological progress.